Hello everybody and welcome to Straub's Design Podcast. Uh, this is episode number 34 and today is Friday the 28th of February in 2020. Uh, my name is Anne or Anne. Um, I'm originally from Finland but now living in Scarborough, Perth in Western Australia. Um, Yes, we've had, like you saw from the intro, um, this week has been very, very stormy, rainy, and there's been thunder around. I think this is maybe the fourth day we've got thunder. Um, it's been interesting. <laughs> it's still been quite hot and humid, which is not so nice, but um, yeah, it's been a bit of a change to the or ever sunny summer weather so so that's been fun um, but I've got my my balcony door open just next to us here so let's see how we go with the noise and everything but hopefully you can hear me well uh, I just want it open for the fresh air I can't uh, justify turning the air con on but uh, yeah let's see how we go um, Okay, so some of you might have noticed uh, my last episode um, I didn't finish. I've been feeling the urge to do some episodes and finish, so I started that. Um, must have been a couple of weeks ago, was it? Oh, that was on uh, Valentine's Day, so it was two weeks ago, yeah. So that one was in Finnish and uh, to my surprise after that episode I, cut, I got quite a few new subscribers so I think I just was past the 600 subscriber mark when I did the part last episode and after that um, now I'm closer to 650 so yeah maybe, maybe there is some demand for the Finnish um, episodes as well. Okay, so there was a phone call that came through and now the phone's been put on airplane mode. <coughs> so hopefully no more um, distractions like that. Um, but yeah, um, a big thank you to all of my subscribers and especially the new ones. Um, you, you all put a smile on my face. That was very nice to notice. But um, okay, let's get started. What I've got, I don't actually have that many different new projects to show you this time but I thought that I will still record and it can be a short episode uh, that would be quite lovely um, but I've got three finished objects for you today um, I'm actually not quite sure how I should do this because I showed a few in my finish episode that were finished so I might just quickly quickly show them to you here we'll have to see how how we go but uh, three finished objects they are all the same pattern <laughs> and then I've got two uh, active whips that I'm going to show you but to start with um, we'll go to what am I wearing and this is one of the um, finished objects from the finish Finish episode. So this is the um, Hohi Locatelli's uh, suburban wrap, and I did this in in lace weight. So it's a paid for pattern in Ravelry, and um, I did this in drops lace, which is this one, um, and this one has got uh, 400 meters in a 50 gram bowl uh, it is where's the contents 70% alpaca and 30% silk so this is so nice and soft um, and the colors are this baby blue um, gray and a nice baby pink um, and yeah so the wrap is I'll try and show you a little bit there's stripes there's eyelets um, beautiful lace a little bit of um, 
it's a it's a really nice pattern here but this lace with the bigger needles it doesn't give it justice but um, I don't think it matters that much but if you do it in the fingering weight yarn that Hohi um, recommends then uh, even these pink ones um, look a bit better it's just to play with the knits and pearls there and um, yeah I haven't measured this um, it's past maybe it's hmm probably closer to um, two meters from end to end and one end of course is this arrowhead and then the start is is like this and then just a straight straight shawl um, this weighs 93 grams so this is so nice and light and airy um, I'm not quite sure because it turns out that those balls of yarn were a little bit overweight because um, yeah it doesn't match when I weighed them at the end of, of the show but about um, I used mostly blue so about 35 grams of blue um, then about 29 grams of the grey and about 25, so half a ball of the pink. That doesn't add up to 93 grams, but yeah, there's a couple of grams extra somewhere of some color. But I just, um, in the last episode, in the finish episode, I showed this and I had um, ends to sew in. So I just finished sewing those ends in um, just before I started the podcast and um, yeah, so I haven't had any experience in wearing this, so we'll have to um, have to see how that goes tomorrow, to next week. Uh, but I think I will start wearing this at work because in the office it sometimes gets a bit cold in the aircon, so I think this will be just perfect. Um, but I will just wear it like this now for for this podcast. It's it is so lovely and light. Um, the only thing I'm worried about this with this is that um, you know rings. So I wear rings like this that get tangled in everything. So I'm just worried that I will pull the stitches up from here and then it starts to look horrible. But I guess you just have to um, have to fix it then, don't you? But yeah, there's my suburban wrap, and I'm really happy with this. It's um, it's a lovely wrap because it's it's like a shawl type of thing, but it's not like a V set or well, the triangle shaped shawl where you get the bib effect or anything like that. So yeah, I'm quite happy with this. Um, and maybe I'll quickly show this other project that um, I finished um, I had as a finished object in the finish episode so um, this was a super quick make this is the okay I'm not sure how to pronounce this Renunculus is it Renunculus uh, top it's by Midori Heroes Heroes maybe <laughs> I'll put links underneath um, so uh, it's a cropped little top I left it sleeveless um, I knit this in four days so one Sunday and then uh, Monday Tuesday and Wednesday after work so super quick um, this is one skein of finger and weight sock yarn and this particular one is from uh, a Finnish dyer called Ulrike by Anki uh, and this is her merino sock, 75 super foot wash merino and 25% nylon, 425 meters in 100 grams. And this one weighs 105 grams. So I used everything except for this. This is what is left of the skein. Uh, this one does not have a color name. 
so mum bought this for me so I'm not sure if this was um, something that didn't quite end up like she the, the dye I wanted or, or what but um, it's a lovely green color um, yeah and in the pattern there's only one size the idea is that you knit it with big needles you can pretty much use what, whatever yarn weight you want I think they wanted you to use six or six and a half mil needles um, my biggest ones were nine mil circulars oh, sorry five mil circulars so that's what I used and the finger and weight yarn and uh, the neckline is the smaller one I uh, probably could have done the, the bigger one um, but in some of the photos it looked so big like it went almost here so I didn't want that so I made the smaller one it's not too tight but I could have maybe done the bigger one as well but what a nice four day project and you get a jumper to wear lovely I've already worn this at work and um, it's quite nice although it's um, hot and muggy summer here still <laughs> But that's it. Now we can go on to my colour work beanies that I've um, I've been working on this week. So the inspiration for these came from a Finnish podcast that I was watching. Um, it's called Villa the Crafts. And uh, Asta there had made um, this uh, beanie. The pattern is from Novita Knits. And it's a free pattern on their website. It's only in Finnish though, but I found um, they had a set of leg warmers and the beanie and everything. So I think the leg warmers are in in English uh, on their site as well. But you know, um, this is a color work beanie, so there's a chart. So you could, um, even if you didn't know Finnish, you could, um, could have a look at that. Um, but yeah, um, the first one I did, I wanted to use my leftover yarns or yarns that I haven't used um, for anything else, haven't found a use. So I decided that I will um, try and use some wool that I've dyed myself a couple of years ago, um, played with food coloring. Uh, and dyed these. They're, oh. these two bowls and then now where is there let's have a look and this one I dyed with um, Shiraz grapes um, but I didn't have anything to set the color with so this one's gone from a lovely purple to a much more uh, brown color, which I don't really like, but I think it, it goes with some other colors. Um, but yeah, so the beanie <clears throat> is here. Um, the contrast, especially if you look a little bit closer, well, it looks pretty good on, <laughs> on the screen. Uh, I was worried about the contrast, that it was a little bit too little and with the speckles here, um, I was afraid that you couldn't see the pattern, but you actually can. And um, yeah, so this is this is the beanie number one. And because this is 100% um, wool, quite scratchy yarn, um, I wanted to do something inside so that it doesn't itch your forehead when you're wearing it. So here I have used um, two merino singles, uh, fingering weight yarns, um, held together and just made a little, yeah, just the inside of the, of the ribbing there. Oops, my shawl's falling. Um, what that made is that the, I don't think the beanie looks so pretty because the ribbing it's quite, it's flaring out a little bit it's better now that I steam ironed it but um yeah it was flaring out a little bit like this but um it's all right Finn loves this beanie 
he loves all the colorful stuff and it's pretty nice um, and what I did here with the colors uh, in the middle of the pattern here I changed to the white blue and green one from that but yeah a nice beanie and it's got the double um, brim there so it's doubled up so it will um, keep the wind away a little bit better as well um, this first beanie, this weighs 87 grams um, and the modifications um, in addition to this uh, ribbing was that I did the decreases at the top a little bit quicker. I didn't want it to be a really long beanie so I did the decreases uh, quicker and I think it's quite a good good sized beanie now so that's beanie number one um, if you want to have a look I have put the um, how much of each yarn I used in this uh, in my Ravelry project and I will link it down uh, so you can go and have a look a little bit closer there if you want um, and then the second one is this so um, here you can see the flaring a little bit better maybe. I just quickly um, ironed this and just uh, sprayed it with some water and ironed it this uh, before I started the podcast. So it's a little bit wet still, but the same thing. Um, here's a Merino single fingering weight held double underneath and then all of these yarns that I've used, they are pretty much, I would say DK, but I'm not sure if I'm right. So um, wool with about 200 meters per 100 grams. And yeah, so this is just the white. Uh, and a variegated uh, actually the white is a Moda Vera yarn as well or Four Seasons I'm not sure it's it's the same thing but they just changed the name um, so this is 100% wool the white and um, then the colorful one is this playful uh, superwash wool 100% um, this one's got 85 meters per 50 grams and this one has been a bit of a problem for me. Ah, see, I bought it because I got it for from sale, two dollars a fifty gram ball. So I got a couple of balls of this, but it's a really loosely spun yarn, and I don't like it. So and you know I didn't know what to do with this anyway because you know it's a bit wild, <laughs> and I don't even really like the the reds. But anyway. Now I found a use for it in this beanie and um, yeah but again um, the yellow is too close to the white so you can't really see the pattern but I still think it's quite nice and I was thinking that maybe I'll do a pom-pom of this at the end and I think that will um, just finish it off nicely. And this one's actually the same weight, so this is also 87 grams in total. So, beanie number two. This really needs the pom pom, doesn't it? Doesn't it look much better like this? Yeah, yeah, I gotta do that. And then I can get rid of some more of this yarn. Um, and a third one, um, well I could say with these ones it took me two days for both of these to to make them so you know after work sitting sitting on the couch at night so two nights per beanie. This one, this is the third one, this one I made in a day. Um, this one's a little bit different so 
first of all, there's contrast. You can actually see the pattern properly. Um, and this yarn was, where do I have them? Yeah. Okay, so you probably remember a couple of episodes back. Or was it last episode? Anyway, um, I made a beanie for my, my dad. It was called a crenellated beanie. Um, and it was made out of this uh, Four Seasons Pure Wool Naturals um, 8 ply. And when I put my, I had my yarns that I was going to use for these beanies in this bag. And for some reason I had taken a ball like this from another stash. I've, I've got this tunic that I've been working on like over 10 years ago uh, that I haven't finished and this is from for that project I'm never gonna finish it but I had taken one of these balls and put it in here and I thought it was the same as this so I thought that I will have plenty enough yarn for a beanie but turns out this was just the um, leftovers from dad's beanie so Therefore, this beanie is a little bit smaller than the other ones. Um, and as you can see, I haven't, I haven't sewn in the ends. But because this is so much softer, this wool, I did the ribbing uh, the same way as in the pattern. So just, uh, just a simple ribbing. And it looks so much better like this. It doesn't flare out or anything. Um, this might be a bit tight, this might be more of a Felix, ah. this is better for Felix, it's not so long for him, but I could wear this as well, I think it's quite nice. Um, and I think I did the um, decreases even quicker in this one because I started to run out of wool. I can show you how much. This is how much was left of the yarn. Um, it's a nice tweedy yarn. I really like it. And because it's so nice and soft, I was even thinking that I could um, go and get some more of it in different colors and make a few more of these beanies. As you can tell, I'm quite excited about this particular um, pattern. Um, but yeah, this one only weighs 56 grams. So it's, um, it's about 20 grams less than these ones. But to be fair, um, it's almost as much as I've used um, the fingering weight yarn for this. So that's the explanation. But this is by far the prettiest in my eyes out of these three beanies. I still have um, leftover yarns that I can use for those beanies and um, yeah that was pretty much the um, finished objects because um, next one next one is a beanie again but that's a, um, a whip let's have a look so a beanie <laughs> Again, using this uh, Four Seasons Pure Wool 8 ply, 80 meters in 50 grams. And then same yarn in a gray. So I've only just started a couple of rows of, of the color work. Oh, there you can see the hole where I've turned around. Okay. Uh, yeah, so this is going to be white and grey. And I'm trying out a new rib again. So this time I thought, because because the first two were flaring out so much, I thought that oh, maybe I need to do the mer merino portion in... Excuse me. I'm having some sparkling water and sometimes it makes me hiccup or burp a little bit. 
Um, so yeah, I thought that maybe I need to do the merino portion in rib as well, so it pulls in a bit more. So what I decided to do with these was, I started knitting this normally, and then did the um, one row of pearls uh, for where I want to fold it. So before the pearl row, I did one knit row, then one pearl row, one knit row, and um, then I turned it around so that this is the right side of this bit, and then I'm I'm knitting it from here up like this, so it all looks pretty, and hopefully. Because I didn't have the same colour left over merino anyway. So I've chosen that. It's actually white and pink there. Um, these two yarns that I've used. So hopefully this will stay underneath so that you can't see the pink. So this is the plan. Um... And then I did a couple of extra rows of just stocking it here before I started the um, color work because um, yeah I made this portion of the rib a little bit longer than this one so that it would cover cover the pink and then um, yeah I didn't want the color work to be lost under the ribbing so a few modifications there and yeah I'm gonna be knitting this after I stop talking to you and let's see how far I get and this is gonna be nice a nice one again um, oh one more one more whip And this one I showed you in my finish episode as well. Before that, I've probably shown this to you two years ago. This is my most ancient whip. Not really, the tunic is even older, but I'm not working on it anymore. So this is, um, yeah, this is a UFO that has um, been upgraded to a whip again. So this is a blanket that I started, a crochet blanket that I started Boxing Day 2014. And I'll, I'll show you a picture because um, it's a bit hard to show because this is massive. It's going to be a uh, single bed bedspread. Like this. So this is my penguin blanket. Um, the penguin blanket is made out of little three round, sorry, two, two round granny squares. They're solid granny squares. So one round, two rounds. And this is 650 squares all together to finish this. Um, there's the penguin's face and the belly and the feet. Um, so 650 squares to finish it. Uh, I need to do 229 more. So 35% remaining. And um, I've been pretty good with this. Um, well, this week I've been working on the beanies, but uh, the week before that I was I was working on this all the time, and I managed fifteen to twenty squares a night. I think yeah, twenty five one night and twelve one, so yeah, around there. And um, so yeah, I'm using a four millimeter needle. Uh, the yarn is this beautiful cotton from Bendigo Woolen Mills.
Um, and yeah, it comes in 200 gram bowls. Um, can't remember if I put the. Yeah, okay, so the meterage is uh, 242 meters in 100 grams. And this is really, really nice and soft cotton. It's not like a, a hard cotton at all. This is really beautiful and soft. And um, I join as I go. I didn't at the start, as you can see here. And here you can even see that I ran out of yarn um, in there. So I just left it. I'll, I'll have to patch it up later. Uh, but then here you can see that I've started to uh, join as I go where you can see that join It's not as pretty as sewing them in, but I can't be bothered I will never finish this if I have to sew them all in uh, Together at the end so join as I go is so much better for me and less ends to weave in <coughs> Speaking of ends There's a whole other job <laughs> on this side of the blanket after they're joined but yeah I was quite happy I um, I got quite a bit done when I picked this up again so I should um, I should probably work on this a bit more again because I want to make I, I want to finish this for Finn um, he was two when I started he's now seven so I'm pretty confident that I um, I should have this ready by the time he turns eight, which is mid-September. But yeah, that's a nice blanket for Finsky, especially because I just made one for Felix, that watermelon blanket. Um, I showed that to you before, so it's time for Finsky to get his own blanket as well. Yeah. That's it. Um, yeah, I think that's um, that's it from me today. I will um, I will leave you with some some video from um, from Scarborough Beach. Um, summertime every Thursday night we've got um, sunset markets, so nighttime markets with a lot of food trucks and. Uh, some craft stalls and then there's all kinds of entertainment there and um, it's really really a lovely event and a lot of people come there so um, I'll leave you with a bit of a uh, bit of that and um, yeah hopefully we'll see you in in two weeks time again um, that will probably be in finished then all right take care bye Thank <laughs> you.